All right, so Mill Avenue traffic is absolutely redonkulous right now. Um, I'm running a little bit late for the game. It's a Thursday night game, ASU versus Stanford. So shout out to Sun Devil Nation um, for checking in with your boy. Um, DevilsDigest.com, uh, ArizonaVarsity.com. I'm gonna be checking in with Ralph. I'll probably catch up with the Maroon and Gold girls, uh, Tressa and Sandy. Uh, I'd like to catch up with Brad Denny. I know that Brad and Joe from Speak of the Devils podcast uh, predicted uh, close Sun Devil victory. I kind of thought that if the Sun Devils were going to win this, they were going to have to win big. I don't know. They might know something that I don't, though. ASU in recent weeks has been trying to establish the ground game. I know there's a lot of questions surrounding is Nikhil hurt or is he going to play? I think that he's good to go, though. I saw him warming up and stuff, thanks to Twitter. Make sure you follow me at Just Chili. Also, subscribe JustChili.tv. Leave a comment. Give me that thumbs up. All that positivity. Also, shout out to Jordan Clark, the newest member of the Sun Devil family. He just committed. Uh, Ryan Clark's kid. I talked to him uh, in Atlanta for the five-star camp. This kid, he's a program changer. He's so good. Anyways, your boy Chili, I'll be right back. I'm trying to get to my parking spot. More than anything, I'm always curious uh, what this student section is gonna be like. And it's a Thursday game. I think it's a huge game for Stanford. It's a Pac-12 game, but I never know what to expect. Anyways, I'm gonna make my way up to the press box. I'll check back in later. To be honest, this crowd is absolutely ridiculously like bad. Like I'm so disappointed. I'm an actual Sun Devil, and when you're like a part-time Sun Devil reporter, cover a person. But talk to me about this crowd. Justify it. We have a lot going on in town I right did, now. I did. I so, did. It's a very busy crowd. You have the Cardinals. You kind of blew it, and then you have ASU. So you're like picking the better of the two, and you know this is the first time what in Arizona that the two have ever played on the same night. So on a Thursday. But it seems like ASU can't draw a crowd no matter what. It's either too hot, or it's too cold, or the game's on a Thursday, or the game's on a Saturday. Like I don't know. That Michigan State game was pretty packed. That one was loud. I packed with Michigan State fans. No. All right, so I have. <laughs> it, 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 it just, it just kind of happens. It, it just kind of happens. It comes okay. out of nowhere. I'm All right. Nervous. All right, so I just had Tressa over here justifying um, the lack of fans here, the lack of support here at uh, Frank Cook Field Sun Devil Stadium. Talk to me a little bit. Is it disappointing? Um. Okay. So did you not see Kiki Hernandez just get killed? You know, if fans are going to complain, they actually have to like pay the price of admission to do so. Yeah, so personally, from the press box, when I looked down, I got a little sad for the team because they want to feel the presence. They want, they, they feed off of the fans' energy. So personally, I was like, oh, bummer, but Cardinals are playing tonight too. But the Cardinals are drawing half the stadium and it's mostly filled with Broncos fans. Me and Tressa talked about it. The Michigan State game that was packed, most of the Michigan State fans. Like, we are all three of us gonna go out to high school games tomorrow at Chaparral Pinnacle. Probably gonna draw more than Sun Devil Stadium at today. Highland Queen Creek, probably gonna draw more than Sun Devil Stadium. And wherever you're going, guess what? Probably more. I think we're going to tomorrow, but it's at... Highly likely there's more. At... <laughs> there's probably more. It is, it's sad, but it's a Thursday night. There's work in school, yeah? I'm so, giving the fans an out, so what, I don't know. So what's the excuse on Saturday night? Sun Devil things, uh, they lose this game 20 to 13 in the fourth quarter. Another game lost by a touchdown.
touchdown, which seems to be the mantra for uh, Coach Edwards. I mean, what do you think? What I think is that there's not a lot of situational awareness going on, especially for a team that's been down uh, in several fourth quarters this year. This isn't uh, the, the year for ASU. If this is going to be the way that it is, this just isn't this the year. It's going to be another forgettable year in Sun Devil football history. we got to catch up with some of these guys real quick, um, but I'm going to come back, check in with Star Lord, and we're going to talk about some of the recruits hey, that were here. Hey, we'll be right back. Checking in with uh, my boy Star Lord again um, after watching the ASU band play. I saw a bunch of the recruits here. I saw Connor Soley, JD Johnson from Pinnacle, who's going to get his ESPN start tomorrow uh, versus Chaparral. It's good to see him at Sun Devil Stadium um, on the heels of the Ben Friendly offer. As far as 2020 quarterbacks, I know they're, they're looking at J.D. Johnson. They were looking a little bit at Will Plummer. Noah Pola Gates was here. Uh, that's a big priority. 2019 safety. He just got offered by Florida State. He just took a visit to Penn State. So everybody wants him. Big Noah Nelson from Williamsfield. Six foot like seven offensive tackle. Uh, Kate Bennett, the 2020 offensive lineman. Uh, your boy Zach Pullup. The, uh, oh, I love that. The athlete Cactus. from Cactus. Yeah. Uh, super dynamic. Can do a lot of things. He could be a safety. I really like him a lot. 6'3", physically mature. He's a gamer. He's coachable. I really like him. He's a five-year guy. He's Falls right in the plan of what uh, Herm and the Savvy are trying to do. And then ASU offered Tosh Baker this week, six foot eight, six foot nine, offensive tackle from Pinnacle High School. He was out here. They were giving him some attention uh, out here on the sidelines as well. I like him. I like him too. He's versatile. He's an athlete too. He's a basketball player. So you know, he's about those rings. He's about that championship life. Who are some of these uh, recruits that have committed lately besides like Jordan Clark? I'm a super. I love that kid. Love. Well, jo Jordan Clark is the most recent to commit. Uh, we interviewed him when we were out in Atlanta. Uh, that kid is just on a different level as far as personability, as far as like marketability. I mean, with his dad working for ESPN, with his dad being a pro as long as he was, how close he is to Antonio Pierce, Troy Polamalu, all those guys. He's just got a professional aura about him. He's a hard kid not to like. And he, he plays amongst some of the most talented players in the nation on his seven on 17, and they're undefeated at University Lab. Uh, he's got that championship mindset. He kind of reminds me of Kobe Williams, maybe a little bit more quick twitch. He could be a really good player. He is a program changer. I think, you know, a couple of him and Connor Soley, I think, you know, this secondary is really shaping up very, very nicely for two, three years down the line. I, I think that if they continue with the coaches that they have, developing with Coach White, uh, with Coach Gonzalez, you'll see more of what you've seen this year. I'm talking to Tressa and uh, Sandy about attendance here, and they're telling me that the problem is is that there's so much going on in Arizona on a Thursday night. Um, the Cardinals are playing somewhere. Um, some of the clubs on Mill are lit, so like, um, <laughs> That's what contributes to the lack of attendance here at Frank Cush Field. Like, no. I think it's so disappointing. It's like early in the season, it's too hot. Late in the season, it's too cold. Then it's a Thursday game, and that's a problem with schedules. And then it's a Saturday game, and you can't bring your kids or whatever. Like, what's the formula in mind? Will it ever get right here? Uh, I really don't think it has anything to do with the options of entertainment. I mean, if this if ASU was five and one at this point. This, stand, this place would have, been, would have been pretty full. When this team's winning, like 13, 2013, 2014, this team is winning, even regardless of the opponent, regardless of the day, because you know, they've been playing these weekday games probably once every year or so. These stands are full. It, it, it's a matter of winning this, and it's not that like they're just bad, it's just kind of mad. What is the single most disappointing thing to you right now with this team? It's that they're just missing that final step. It's not that they're, they're on talent. They have enough talent to win. I mean, uh, it's just week in, week out, there seems to be that one missing element that prevents all the dominoes from falling the right way. He knows everything about Sun Devil football, so I trust him. <laughs> we need to fill these stands up somehow, because it, it seems it like was, there's more employees at Frank Cush Field than there are there you know, were, people in attendance. There were a lot of national folks commenting. I mean, this is a national TV game. ESPN front, and there was a lot there of chatter. Be, there might be more people <laughs> in the stands at Pinnacle Chaparral for that ESPN game tomorrow. 
ASU fully having their problems. The football team is not where we thought they would be at this point in the season. This is a situation where, you know, we said three or four years down the line, according to Ray Anderson, that this team could win a national championship. So hopefully we're going to figure out if that's true or not. They've been doing really, really well with the recruiting. Um, Connor Soley's in, um, Andre Johnson. Uh, they just got the commit from uh, Louisiana, Jordan Clark. Um, I'm super big on him. I just don't know what the answers are for this season. It's gonna be a struggle. I'm starting to worry that this team might be a four-win team. I'm starting to worry that Nikhil Harry may not crack a thousand yards, which I think would be one of the biggest travesties and it's gonna be something that we look at and hold a grudge on this Herm Edwards regime. How could the local boy that, that showed so much promise, that has so much talent, not crack a thousand yards and it's like the coach's fault like it's absolutely crazy to me anyways um continue to hang out with your boy follow me on twitter at just chili uh tweet me let me know what your thoughts are also just chili.tv make sure you guys subscribe hit that thumbs up button uh leave some comments let's let's start the discussion let's get the discussion going um shout out to my boy star lord ralph amson uh hodobino uh the girls tressa and sandy and my boy Brad Denny, he's always the ambassador from Speak of the Devils podcast that always checks in. Attendance, it's got to get up. Like, come on, guys, seriously. Anyways, your boy Chili, I'm out of here. Peace. Works up.